as you can see here, um, we, we built that and we built that so far. So, we got that, it's there, we got that, it's there. So, here's my drawing, my plan, so to speak. Um, you can see here that I have servo motors with little brackets that are going to turn like this. And when it turns clockwise, it's going to pull this string. When it turns counterclockwise, it will pull this string. Now, these strings pass through rubber, rubber hoses, which are, I'm going to just um, use electrical wire and pull out the copper wire out of it just leaving the hose and these hose will be clamped down here you can see the little clamp I drew in here so the, the wires won't move I'll have plenty of flex so that when the joints move um, it won't affect the string at the end of the wire so the string goes through the wire the length of this um, won't change since, since it's just going to flex the hose so it won't affect the pull of that as the hand moves up and down. I want the fingers to be able to move independently of wrist. Um, so this is actually designed and inspired by me fixing some bike brakes before. And I learned the hard way when I didn't, I hooked the brakes up directly with just the wire and no tube. And when I turned left, the brakes, the rear brakes turned on because I didn't realize how the the function of the rubber tube and it turns out the rubber tube is just designed to, to give the wire slack. Um, I'm planning not to use wire, I'm planning to use just upholstery thread. And the upholstery thread will just run right through all the way up and then to a joint and then this one is hidden but it would run behind and then connect to the rear side of the joint so one would move it this way, one this way. Um, so when you turn it counterclockwise this one pulls in and it also releases the opposing muscle so these two represent muscles and when it pulls that muscle it also releases that muscle so um, when one muscle tightens the other one needs to equally relax and this represents the tightening and the relaxing as this thing moves up and down um, and then Let's see. So this little square and that's, or I mean this little circle, that little circle represents where it will tie into the bone. And the distance you tie into the bone, I think, will show the speed with which it will jerk up. So if you put it way over here, it would pull up slower. If you put it closer to the axis, it'll whip it up faster and require less movement of the motor to make it fully extend or, or fully bend down. Um, my original design was to have the wires running through the bone and then coming out of the bone through little holes, but I thought that would weaken the integrity of the structure of the bone. So I later redesigned it to, have, to all be wired outside of the bones, even though if it were inside the bones, it would really simplify the overlook and make it a cleaner look. But I'm not worried about that because all of this stuff is going to be wrapped in skin at the end anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Um, so yeah, you got your servos, and then um, I'm going to need one servo per per um, degree of, what's it called, DOF or something? One servo per muscle. So this doesn't move this way. It only moves up and down. So I only need one servo to cover the the front and back wires to cover this single movement. I'll need one for this one. It doesn't move this way. That actually moves down here. I was able to verify that by trying to move this. Um, so this doesn't move it. It'll just have side straps, kind of like the ACL and MCL of the knee. And so this will have one servo to cover the front and back of that moving. And then this one will have one. Overall, I believe I calculated um, the hand is going to have like 24 
different servos it will need. So this is two. So it'll be like three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. So we'll have probably eight, but then we can also stack them wide as you get into the forearm muscle. I'll be able to put like two servos stacked. So that'll be eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then maybe put some like that. Uh, maybe some between 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So around 21, and then we can start spilling over here um, into the bicep and tricep area to get additional servos to feed the hands. If we don't have enough room here, we can put a few here and behind. But we still want to keep the contour. That's why I drew, I, I actually traced my arm onto here to get the contour of my arm. I'm using my body as reference because that should be a lot easier rather than trying to look up pictures of a body, I can just look at my actual body to get all the measurements and stuff. So I trace my arm here. I'm going to want the servos to not be sticking out past the natural contour of the arm because I want the arm to look as natural as possible. There's actually two bones in the forearm and those are going to need to be able to rotate too, which I've thought about, but I'm planning to actually hash out the details of that when I actually make it. I really can only draw so much and I don't and a blueprint like this. Um, but you can definitely see the plan. Um, I was initially going to have the joints be round, but I later decided I'm going to actually use um, joints that look more like real bones. Because I think real bones are designed for a lot of strength. So this actually is the thumb. This is not exactly to scale these bones here but they're a little bit smaller so that's that